Godzilla, basketball. The two actually come together more times than you may think. If you're curious on how that is, you've come to the right place. Let's see the big G get a slam dunk and dive right in. Please consider both liking and subscribing. It really helps. So when it comes to the world of sports, basketball seems to be the game Godzilla has the most relationship with. Definitely more than others as far as I know. Our journey begins with an infamous TV commercial that aired back in 1992, in which Godzilla is doing his usual Tuesday rampage when out of nowhere a giant sized Charles Barkley shows up to stop him, I guess. For those who don't know, Charles Barkley was a famous and well-known NBA player throughout the course of the late 80s to 90s. His reputation wasn't the most brightest, but he was still well loved by many people thanks in part to his outgoing attitude. Anyway, him and Godzilla are about to duke it out with a game of b-ball. Godzilla's got tail advantage, but that's not enough as Barkley shoots for the win. Then the two walk off in the sunset as Barkley says, Have you ever thought about wearing shoes? This was a fun little ad. The commercial was produced at Industrial Light and Magic, who were well known at the time for working on the effects of the original Star Wars trilogy and are still in business even today, working on modern blockbusters. The effort they put in behind the project was incredible, utilizing many techniques that Toho themselves used to create many of their own classic Godzilla movies, such as the animatronic head, most famously used in Godzilla 84, and the frame-by-frame -frame animation done to create Godzilla's breath. It was done for a single shot, but the effort was still appreciated, especially the repetitious work that goes into making one single shot. Since it requires 72 different drawings, one for each frame of the three-second shot. The Godzilla suit does look nice. It is a bit on the cheesy side, but for what it was made for, it looks fine, especially with those spiffy glasses on. The commercial may have been 30 seconds, but you can definitely see this took many man hours to make. If you watch the behind the scenes video, you can see a lot of workers struggling and sighing over many things going wrong on the set. As someone who studied film and have done a few amateur ones myself, I can really feel the pain that goes into creating stuff like this. It's not easy making a movie or even a 30 second commercial, but once you've gotten to the end of it, you feel like you're on top of the world. The commercial aired only in Japan to advertise the Nike shoes, but it would soon air in other parts of the world soon after. The following year of 1993 would actually continue the idea of the NBA player meeting the King of the Monsters, and it would be done so with Godzilla vs. Barkley, a one-shot story published by Dark Horse Comics. This is basically the commercial, but now with a story if you can really call it much of one. Our main lead, besides Barkley himself, is a kid named Matthew who simply wants to see the basketball star. Matthew's grandpa, who is accompanying him, gives him a special coin, telling him it's a magical lucky dollar to help cheer him up. Godzilla suddenly appears and all hell starts breaking loose. Matthew then runs to Barkley, telling the athlete that he's the only one who can defeat Godzilla. Charles doesn't seem to care much at first, until Matt calls him Earth's mightiest warrior. It's then Charles goes, Oh, you've got a point there. It's funny that throughout the story, Barkley at times gets referred to as a warrior. I never really thought of pinning sports athletes in the same category as swordsmen, axe wielders, knights and such. But then again, I don't really watch a lot of sports, so who am I to say? Anyways, Barkley and Matthew are about to play for the coin. Charles touches it and magically grows into a giant with no explanation given. And he goes to confront the Big G. Godzilla reacts like he normally should in this situation, but things quickly get comedic once Barkley challenges Godzilla to a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Because like he says, Godzilla's a sucker for b-ball. Excuse me, what? They then go to an Air Force base where the two have their game. And for whatever reason, Godzilla just goes along with it. The game is kind of all over the place with the two nailing each other back and forth. There's a lot of penalties that would be going on if this game had been official. But I like to think of it as Godzilla playing Barkley's game, but with his rules. As Godzilla's losing, he gets mad and shoots his breath at the ball, turning it into an unrecognizable pile of mash. Barkley scolds the Big G for acting like a sore loser. The two get along then after, with Barkley calling out the bulls, and then the two walking off together like in the commercial. Barkley then gets Godzilla some custom-made Nike shoes, and tells him that he'll see him in about a hundred years. I don't know what kind of life water Barkley's drinking to make him think that both him and Godzilla will even be around for a hundred years, let alone physically fit enough to play a game of basketball, but whatever. Godzilla got busy and Barkley returns the coin to Matthew. And that's about it. Honestly, I enjoyed this story much more than I thought I would. 
There's a lot of dumb stuff happening around that either makes no sense, goes unexplained, or just happens for the sake of it. But strangely, it all comes together nicely to create this fun little tale of two giants going at it with basketball. It doesn't take itself seriously at all, and I feel that's one of the reasons I like it a lot. The story gets a lot of hate for existing, and even the writer uses a pseudonym to hide their real name. But with the concept of Godzilla vs. Barkley, does your mind really think this is meant to be taken seriously, and that it'll have some deep story? I'd give it a read if you'd like a good laugh. Now at this point you might be wondering if Charles Barkley was a fan of Godzilla, given this comic and the commercial he made with the Big G. Well, short answer is no. Turns out when Barkley did the commercial back in 92, he had no idea who Godzilla even was, as stated later when Barkley got shown the commercial many years later. Oh my god, you played Godzilla in a... And you didn't know who Godzilla was? I was a travel. And you actually played him in a... against him in a TV... Also, another NBA player we're going to be talking about is here too, Shaquille O'Neal. Listen to the question Shaq gives Barkley here. Godzilla has a son, what's his name? Presented by Kia. Now, I know the answer we're all thinking of. But does Barkley know? Godzilla has a son, what's his name? Quick. I don't know that. Well, no surprise there. But what is a surprise is the answer Shaq gives. Godzuki. Don't see it. Excuse me, what? Godzuki. Well, I guess this segues nicely into our next topic. In 2003, Cartoon Network had this event called the NBA All-Star Slam, where basketball stars got to sit down with their favorite cartoon characters and chat for a bit. I just, I'm just happy that you're here with me right now. I'm chilling. I get to watch the show every day, you know. And, Holy uh, Thundera! You watch the Thundercats every day? <laughs> I'll watch you every time I get a chance. These were all pretty funny, but sadly a lot of the interviews are really hard to find given the time period. Thankfully, the one that matters for this video has managed to surface. My favorite cartoon character of all time is Godzilla. Wanna know why? He was strong, he was mean, and everybody feared him. You heard it, Shaquille Rashawn O'Neal chose the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla as his favorite cartoon. Now, every star was able to talk with their favorite cartoon character and interact with them. How come you picked Hong Kong Fui? Cause you my dog. Yeah. But how does that work with Godzilla? Joining Shaq via satellite from Osaka, Japan, is Godzilla. Godzilla is saying it's very nice to meet you, Shaq. I'm your biggest fan. Get it? Ah, nothing like a good old bland voice coming out of the toughest monster of all time. I guess they could have used subtitles, but I won't lie and say the voice isn't funny. Brush your teeth, Godzilla. Ha huh, ha, huh. that's a good one, Jack. Roar. It is a bit annoying they have this stock roar over him while he's talking, so it kind of gets a little hard to hear what Godzilla's saying at times. Anyway, in the interview, Godzilla mentions his favorite movie of all time is Blue Chips. How ironic it being Shaq's first film. Godzilla then tells Shaquille if he has any other movies coming out, to which Shaq depressingly replies, No, I don't have any movies coming up. Sorry, Godzilla. And I think we'll end it there. Anyways, was there any other basketball Godzilla-related media that I might have missed? If so, leave so in the comments below. Until next time, take care, everyone. I'll just have to catch you on the court then. He's never faced an adversary like this. Godzilla vs. Charles Barkley. It's the battle of the century, and it's coming soon. Get ready to see a real monster jam.